The second largest invertebrate group is the phylum mollusca. It includes the octopus and more than 70,000 other species of mollusks. 10,000 more than the species in the phylum to which man belongs. Of the animal groups, the mollusks are one of the best to illustrate adaptive radiation. In this film, we shall investigate aspects of the molluscan body to learn why this is so. Mollusca means soft-bodied, and all members of the phylum exhibit this characteristic. We can locate the principal structure of mollusks by observing the body plan of this chitin. Like all mollusks, the chitin has distinctive molluscan features. The mantle is the fleshy part that covers the viscera, somewhat like a roof covers a house. The mantle secretes the protective shell. The chitin has a creeping muscular foot. And in the mouth, there is a radula. These animals have an expanded surface, the gills, through which the exchange of respiratory gases takes place. Here is the mantle and shell of a live chitin. The animal creeps on its muscular foot. The radula is a horny ribbon covered with many rows of hard, recurved teeth. It is used to rasp off small fragments of food. Here is a close view of the radula showing the individual teeth. Through millenniums of time, the general body form of the mollusk has been adapted to many specialized and very different ways of life. In this film, we select species of mollusks to exemplify adaptive radiation. All but one of the five classes of mollusks are named after the type of foot they have. Representatives of the five classes are the chitons, snails, clams and oysters, tooth shells, squids, octopuses, and nautilus. The ending poda comes from the Greek word for foot. The Amphenura are named after the type of nervous system they have. This species is the coat of mail chitin, a small animal whose shell consists of eight plates, commonly called butterfly shells. One often finds these washed up on marine beaches. The largest chitin is this California species, called cryptochitin, meaning shells embedded in mantle. Coastal Indians have been known to eat these mollusks in times of extreme hunger. Gastropods are belly-footed mollusks. Their foot is an appendage of the larger body mass. Among the gastropods are the whelk, the limpet, and the slug. The common garden snail is another gastropod. Its soft body is encased in a shell built from the calcium carbonate deposits secreted by its mantle. As it grows, it builds its shell larger and a spiral shape results. The snail, of course, has a radula equipped with sharp teeth to rasp or grind its food. This oyster drill uses its radula to drill a hole through the shell of an oyster to feed upon it. From the underside of a snail, we can see how it moves by wave-like contractions of the foot. Though its pace is notoriously slow, the snail is so delicate in its movements that it can crawl over the edge of a razor-sharp piece of glass without being cut. Snails are found in both salt and fresh water, and on land. 
In order to live, most landforms require considerable moisture. The nudibranch is a type of snail without a shell. Some species have brilliant color markings. The sea hare or sea slug has a small internal shell. Snails are used by some as food. Some snail shells, along with those of most other mollusks, are a source of beauty and enjoyment. Pelecipod means hatchet-shaped foot. Included in this class are some of the most interesting and valuable mollusks. The freshwater mussel or clam lives in the mud or sand. It has bilaterally symmetrical shells. The clam lacks the radula. It feeds on small particles of food strained from the water taken into its mantle cavity through its siphon. The food particles are caught on a thin layer of mucus on the surface of the gills. By means of cilia, the mucus is moved to the mouth. In this microscopic view, we see the beating cilia in the clam's gill. The clam's gill is one of the best kinds of living material for the study of ciliary action. Here, we sprinkle carmen powder on a living clam's gill. Watch as time-lapse photography reveals how the material is moved toward the mouth. The hatchet-shaped foot of the razor clam is a good example of the way in which this pelecipod is well adapted to the kind of movement it makes. Most clams live in the mud or sand and need a broad, flat-surfaced foot to help them dig. Some clams dig with a quick thrusting movement of the foot. The scallop, or pecten, illustrates another method of movement unique to mollusks. It forcefully expels water by the clapping action of its bivalve shell. In this way, it propels itself through the water. While all mollusks reproduce through eggs, some extrude their young in larval form. The eggs of the freshwater clam pass to the gills of the mother after she lays them. The eggs develop in the mother's gills through two larval stages into tiny clams known as glucidia. Then the mother extrudes them into the water. Glucidia are produced in tremendous numbers. As a fish takes water containing glucidia through its mouth past its gills, some of the glucidia attach themselves to the gills. There, they live as parasites through their final larval stage. Then they drop off the fish into the mud where they grow rapidly. The freshwater clam thrives in streams that flow through regions of limestone. Limestone is rich in calcium, the material from which the animal builds its shell. The shells of freshwater clams are the source of pearl buttons. Another valuable pelecipod is the oyster, used around the world as an important source of food. The oyster has two unsymmetrical shells through which the water flows when the oyster is submerged. Sometimes a parasite or small particle of foreign substance lodges in the sensitive membranes of the oyster, causing irritation. The oyster may then cover this irritant with layers of a secreted substance which hardens. This protects the animal from possible injury. Men culture pearls by inserting a bead made from a clam shell into the oyster's body to serve as the pearl nucleus. Widely used as food, oysters are planted and harvested.
Other edible pelecipods are the soft-shelled clam and this hard-shelled clam. The shell of this clam, Venus mercenaria, was used for wampum, a medium of exchange by North American Indians. Giant clams of the Western Pacific Ocean sometimes measure three feet across and weigh over 500 pounds. The scaphopods live in the deep sea or in the mud and sand of shore water. This class of mollusks is often referred to as the tooth shells because of their tooth-like shape. The Pacific Coast Indians found that these shells made good wampum. Being open at both ends, the shells were easily sewn together to make jewelry, trimming for wearing apparel, and other ornate articles. The octopus belongs to another class of mollusks called the cephalopods, or head-footed animals. This means that the head is located at the base of the foot, which is divided into tentacles or arms. Some cephalopods have no shell, but do have other protective devices. The squid, for example, uses its siphons to move swiftly by jet propulsion. Most cephalopods can also eject an ink-like substance which clouds the water as a means of defense. From its large head foot, 10 tentacles or arms project. These are lined with suction cups that are used to capture and hold its prey. The squid can change color to make itself nearly transparent. Here we see pigment cells in newly hatched squids. Common squid rarely exceed a foot in length, although some species grow more than 50 feet long. The shell of the squid is a thin, horny plate which lies buried under the mantle. One cephalopod, the cuttlefish, has a calcareous skeleton, which when dried forms the cuttlebone used as a dietary supplement for pet birds. The octopus, a close relative of the squid, is fairly common in most oceans. As its name implies, it has eight tentacles. Its huge head foot, large eyes, and general appearance have given rise to its exaggerated reputation as a monster of the deep. Its eight tentacles, lined with rows of suction cups, can get a powerful grip on its prey. Usually the prey is a crab. Its mouth, located at the center of the tentacles, can inject a paralyzing poison into the victim from its salivary glands. The octopus can use its tentacles for crawling or swimming. It can also use its siphons to swim by jet propulsion. The smaller forms of octopuses frequent shallower water and hide among the rocks. The octopus can also eject an inky substance for protection. Here is another cephalopod, the chambered nautilus of the South Pacific and Indian Ocean. Its shell is external and made up of a number of separate chambers, each built in successive stages of growth. The abandoned chambers fill with gas, making the shell buoyant and easier for the Nautilus to get around in the water. So we have observed five different classes of mollusks. Until about 1956, these were the only ones known. At that time, a sixth class, Monoplacophora, was tentatively established. What had been thought to be a form extinct for 280 million years apparently had survived. Specimens of this rare form were found off the west coast of Costa Rica. They were tentatively identified as descendants of a now extinct form that had been considered to be related either to the chitons or the limpets. The discovery of a fresh specimen of Neopolina for study seems to have enabled scientists to determine that this form is neither a chitin nor a limpet, but represents a new class, Monoplacophora. This is an example of how new discoveries clarify and expand our knowledge. Amphenura, 
Pelicipida, Scaphopida, Gastropoda, Cephalopoda. And now, a new class, the Monoplacophora. These are the mollusks, colorful and interesting members of the animal kingdom. Besides their fossil shell deposits of limestone, many living forms are of special value to man as important sources of delicious food, beautiful adornment, and enjoyment. All of this enormous variety of molluscan life attests to the success of these animals, a success directly attributable to the complex of features, the mantle, the shell, the foot, and the radula, which make up the molluscan body. Each class combines these structures in a certain way and well illustrates the principle of adaptive radiation.